The fallout from the Dylan Mulvaney campaign with Bud Light was not the first of its kind, and it certainly won't be the last. In fact, it's not the last, because there was a fresh boycott just last week against Wix Group PLC, when the chief operations officer made some comments which the public did not take very well. You can see from this graph here that Wix Group PLC's share price dropped over 4% in one day because of these comments. Now, in this video, I'm going to talk about some of the legal implications that might arise from such comments, aside from the general argument about what is ultimately trans-critical views. So uh, I'm going to show you the interview by Fraser Longdon so you can hear it for yourself and hear the comments yourself. But essentially what he said was anybody that held trans-critical views were a bigot and not welcome in their store. A trans-critical view is simply that where you might believe that a man identifying as a woman is not truly a woman and a woman identifying as a man is not truly a man. According to Fraser Longdon, if you hold those views, you are transcritical, you're a bigot, and not welcome at Wix anymore. But don't take it from me, take it directly from Fraser Longdon, and you can hear the words directly from him yourself. Let me play that interview for you now, uh, so you can hear it directly from him. Uh, this was on a Pink News interview, uh, so you can hear the full, in well, not the full interview, uh, his comments on that interview Right. But I could feel how that must have felt for people where it's targeted at who they who they are. You know, that's uh, that's much harder. But also, you know, if I'm honest and I accept that I what I'm about to say comes from a position of privilege, you know, it wasn't a lot of people. Yeah. And mm. I just decided to ignore it. Right. Because I wasn't doing what we were doing at Wix for them. We're not. You know, I don't think I'm ever going to change some of the bigots out there's. Uh, mind i'm never going to win that argument with them so we were doing it to show support to the community you know even just taking this down to a very pure commercial perspective you can build a huge loyalty with one group the other 10 percent at the other end and i'm making up the numbers of 10 percent you know they're just hot air and they will they will go and buy a tin and paint in the nearest place to them and that might have been us before it might not have been us after afterwards and equally if they do come in and buy that tin and paint and behave that way then they're not welcome in our stores anyway so there you hear it directly from uh fraser longdon himself um clearly multiple motives for uh, being involved and running uh, that campaign uh, in support on that weekend uh, one of which to support the community and uh, one of which to appeal on a commercial basis to another group of potential customers but in doing so has clearly alienated uh, another bunch of customers by making those sort of comments and quite openly acknowledging the p prospect of a boycott by saying those people admittedly saying if they behave in that way are not welcome in our store anyway, but also saying that if they hold those views, um, then they might be someone that used to buy a tin of paint, as he put it, in their store and may not do so afterwards. But aside from the underlying discussion and issue and debate here, there's some potential legal implications from these comments themselves. Because if we boil this down to a legal basis, this is excluding someone from the store, potentially if they behave in a certain way or express certain views, or saying that someone with certain views are not welcome in their store. Now, these sort of views, i.e. transcritical views, have been uh, adjudicated in court before. Uh, many of you may remember the Mayor Forstatter case, which I've referenced previously, at the very least tangentially. Mayor Forstatter was a tax expert and international development researcher, contracted as a visiting fellow by the Centre for Global Development Europe, the CGD, a think tank, in uh, 2018. She posted several tweets and had a discussion with staff members expressing her belief that sex is immutable and not to be conflated with gender identity. She also expressed her opposition to the proposed changes to the G Gender Recognition Act of 2004. I did a video on this previously. Those changes, in short, would mean that somebody could obtain legal recognition and status as their newly acquired gender merely by self-identifying as the new gender. And as a result of this, the CGD did not renew her contract at the end of 2018. 
and she brought a claim for discrimination and victimization. The initial claim failed because the employment judge found that her beliefs, these beliefs that she held, uh, failed on one of the criteria, which is that being worthy of respect in a democratic society, uh, not being incompatible with human dignity, and not conflicting with the fundamental rights of others. However, Mayor Forstatter appealed this decision, which was then overturned in June 2021, and found that her beliefs ag against changing sex were protected under the Equality Act. And as the judgment notes, as it's quoted here, uh, just as the legal recognition of civil partnerships does not negate the right of a person to believe that marriage should only apply to heterosexual couples, becoming the acquired gender for all purposes within the meaning of the GRA, Gender Recognition Act, does not negate a person's right to believe, like the claimant, that as a matter of biology, a trans person is still their natal sex, i.e. they are still the same sex that they were when they were born. Both beliefs may be profoundly offensive and even distressing to many others, but they are beliefs that are and must be tolerated in a pluralist society. Now, just to be clear, holding a belief and manifesting a belief are two very different things. Um, even if you hold a belief, it doesn't mean you have free reign to insult and harass and intimidate other people. If you hold those beliefs, they can be protected. But what that means is if you are treated less favorably because of your beliefs, then that can be a discriminatory act by a company. For example, if a company were to exclude somebody of a particular faith or religion, that would be discriminatory because that is protected under the Equality Act. There are certain exemptions and ways that this applies in very narrow circumstances, but I'll deal with that more in another video. But dealing with these comments in this particular case, not that I think for a moment that the entire group of Wix is going to enforce this as a new rule that anyone that holds these beliefs is excluded from the store, but the comments were certainly made at least from my perspective, made in the capacity of chief operating officer for the group. It doesn't appear to me that they were made in a personal capacity because he was speaking, we as Wix were doing this. Um, this is why we were doing it. We were attracting a new customer base and so on. And so those comments were made in that capacity of employment and therefore, at least by vicarious liability, will reflect the groups and represent the group's views. And so if that's the case, if that were the case, if someone were to bring a claim on the basis that they felt discriminated against because their views are not tolerated and they are no longer welcome, then there is a potential claim there that they feel that they've been treated less fairly because of their beliefs, which following um, the forced utter judgment, and there are some others, that those are protected beliefs under the Equality Act. Much like if there was a debate about a different faith or religion, and somebody from a company said, we don't agree with those views, they are not welcome in the store. Clearly, that would be discriminatory and unlawful. And anyone from that group would be able to bring a claim if they felt that they were unfairly treated. And so for me, without talking about the underlying debate here, because that's not what I'm doing here, um, you might have your own views about the underlying debate and that your views, again, are your views. That's the very point of this video. But without even addressing that, um, maybe I do have some views on that. You might find those over at Black Belt Secrets linked in the description below where my personal views and, and feelings can come across more properly than they are expressed here. Here, I try to keep it neutral an expression of the law, how it might apply. And in this particular case, there may well be difficulties to fall out from this. Now, I note that one possible uh, argument in favour of Wix and uh, in Fraser's favour here is said that if people are behaving in a certain way. So I infer, not that I've seen any of the background material, but there is always background material. But I infer that there is background material to some people behaving badly at certain events, and those comments of his were probably aimed at the behavior of those individuals and the manifestation of any beliefs rather than the beliefs themselves. So 
as an advocate, I've given you the arguments against what he said, but I'll also say that in his defense, um, his expression was probably one of frustration and condemnation of the behavior by him and then in, in turn by the group of the behavior which is manifesting any such views. At least that's what I think it would be. I don't think for a moment that it would be a blanket, this is what we think, anybody with those views. Although that is certainly how it's been taken by many online, and I can certainly understand how that has been interpreted and inferred online by a great number of people, hence the boycott of over 4% in one day. It's a significant drop in shares. And um, from what I understand, there's been a backlash to against the boycott to support the group's support of this event and condemnation of that behavior. But that's a very balanced way of looking at it. There's always two sides to look at it. But either way, um, there is significant legal risk in excluding a group based on their what are really protected philosophical beliefs. So I hope you found that interesting as a bit of a legal take. Obviously, you can't take any of this as legal advice. It never is. It's just my take and um, my comments on what I've read on what has happened. But I hope you found that interesting. Please do remember to like the video and subscribe. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you.